Rose Day, let me start uh, message, Rose Day message. The title mm -hmm. uh, for today's message is New Heaven and New Earth and New Jerusalem by portion Revelation chapter 21 from verse 1 to 27. Uh, let's read it there by portion quickly. After that, let's show what you've got. Here say, Then I saw a new heaven and new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them, and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down for these words, uh, trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the, the murderers, the sexual immoral, those who practice magic art, the idolaters and all liars, they will be consigned to fire the lake of burning sulfur. This is a second death. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowels of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain, great and high, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of, the, out of heaven, from God. He shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and with twelve angels at the gates. On the gate were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city was laid out like a skirt, as long as it was wide. He measured the city with a rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length and as wide and high as it is long. The angel measured the wall with a human measurement, and it was 144 cubits thick. The wall was made of jasper and the city of the city of pure gold and pure as glass. The foundation of the city wall was decorated with every kind of uh, precious stone. The first foundation was a jasper, the second sapphire, the third uh, agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the uh, sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth boreal, the ninth topaz, the tenth uh, topcase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelfth gate, uh, twelve gates were twelve portals, each gate made of a single portal. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as a transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its Lamb. The nation will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nation will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's pray shortly after that. Let's show the God. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this precious opportunity 
to share, uh, share uh, words of God. There is a bread of life uh, for us, Lord and Father. Heavenly Father, let this words of God really touch our heart and let our life be changed and transformed. Uh, and our soul and spirit uh, to be uh, be fed by this uh, words of God, Lord and Father. Heavenly Father, uh, <clears throat> Heavenly Father, once again, Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Uh, this uh, living words of God, Lord and Father, feed us and uh, nurture us, Lord and Father, help us grow, and so that uh, we may produce uh, good fruit to our life, Lord and Father. Really, our life can be devoted uh, to our Jesus Christ and all of uh, our Jesus Christ, Lord and Father, so that uh, we can live the life really pleasing. Please. Uh, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord and Father. And Father, thank you so much. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, today uh, we open our Bible, or Revelation, chapter 21, 1 to 27. Uh, the title is New Heaven and New Earth and New Jerusalem. Uh, today we are going to share about heaven and hell. We are already uh, heard a lot, have heard, uh, have heard a lot. Uh, these topics, but uh, still, it's a very, very crucial, very important topic to all people, all believers. That's why we are. Uh, that's why let's uh, remind again. Let's re remember again. Um, actually, today by portion of Revelation chapter twenty-one and twenty-two, very nicely describe how uh, what the kingdom of heaven, eternal paradise look like, how heaven look like, and also this Bible shall tell us uh, how we able to uh, enter the kingdom of heaven. So uh, through uh, seeing this word of God together, uh, let's remind again uh, how much wonderful kingdom of heaven is, and also how much terrible the hell is, and let's uh, rem remind that we surely never be fail to entering kingdom of heaven. Okay, Bible say, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, say like this, just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment. What does it mean? All human supposed to die one day. Nobody uh, able to avoid death. Everybody supposed to finish life on this earth and supposed to uh, go next world. Uh, we one day will die, and we don't know when the death suddenly come. After that, what happened? This word of God say, uh, we will face judgment. We are all supposed to be uh, supposed to stand before God, and we have a judgment. After judgment, what happened? We uh, surely go to uh, eternal world. There's a two eternal world, heaven and hell. Many people uh, don't believe the existence of heaven and hell. They think uh, the life in this world is everything. They, uh, they don't believe uh, heaven and hell are real. But I will say uh, heaven and hell really exist. Uh, heaven and hell are real. Jesus Christ said about the parable of rich man and the beggar uh, Lazarus. This story surely say about uh, existence of heaven and hell. Uh, in this story, the rich man and the beggar Lazarus appear. Rich man, he's a rich, so he enjoyed many good things in this world. He was a uh, rich, he wore good clothes, living, good house. Uh, ate delicious food every day. Uh, he lived really uh, a luxurious life, good life, comfortable life. But beggar Lazarus, he was a beggar. Uh, he was a very poor. He didn't have a, a proper house. And his uh, clothes almost worn out. And uh, he even didn't have a food. So, he could survive through the uh, debris of food uh, that come from uh, rich man's house. 
and his uh, skin uh, was uh, uh, he, he, his skin, he had a skin uh, problem he had a, a sores on his skin so uh, dogs came to him and licked his sore on his skin I will say likewise Dragon Lazarus he lived miserable life in this world but when they die their life uh, totally uh, changed their situation totally changed rich man Bible says he went to hell when he went to hell he was tormented and he was tortured very suffering uh, in terribly hot fire um, continually eternally one day he looked up heaven and he saw Nazareth whom he looked down on continually uh, in the world he was there and his, he was, his opinion totally different uh, from the time when he was living there uh, his face shiny or uh, nice clothes even he was uh, beside uh, spiritual ancestor everyone other uh, spiritual ancestor now rich man uh, request to uh, Abraham Father Abraham please let Lazarus uh, Put his uh, put his finger uh, into the water and uh, let him uh, wet tip of my uh, tongue so that even small I can be uh, uh, I can be uh, so I can be solved from this terrible thirsty. Uh, he requested like that, but what? Uh, Abraham say, what Abraham reply? Abraham reply that uh, heaven and hell, there is a big chasm. So those who, those who are in heaven cannot go hell. Those who are in uh, hell cannot go heaven. Yeah, he said like that. And so uh, rich man so disappointed uh, because he could not uh, achieve what he desired. Just a very very simple thing, uh, being wet, tip of his tongue, so that uh, it can be a little uh, uh, cool down from terribly hotness in the hell. Now he requests one more thing to Abraham, uh, Father Abraham. Then please help, please, uh, please the. Answer to the, this request. Yeah. I, I have uh, five brothers uh, in the world and they don't know heaven and hell. Uh, but I know now hell is so terrible. So I never want my brothers come here and suffering like me. So please send Lazarus to them and let Lazarus give warning to them so that they may not, they never come here and suffer like me here he requested like that but uh, Abraham say already in the world there is a prophet evangelist people of God they continue to preach heaven and hell there is heaven and hell so repent your sin believe in Jesus Christ and come to God live a holy life righteous life they preach they continually say if your brother don't listen to them even another uh, go to them and uh, speak one they uh, not just, uh, testify they go heaven and hell they may not believe yeah. so this is a story of rich man and Dragon Lazarus in book of Luke chapter 16 19 to 31 anyway this five person definitely say that heaven and hell are real they are really heaven and hell yeah our Jesus Christ say what good will it be for some, uh, someone to gain in the whole world, yet forfeit their soul. Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? What does it mean? Uh, we already uh, saw in previous uh, parable, uh, rich man and the beggar Lazarus. Rich man, he had uh, uh, many good things in this world. Richness, good house, good food, and uh, a good clothes. Yeah. In earthly uh, viewpoint, and also the eye, 
he is a successful person. Many people uh, think that kind of person is successful. Yeah. But he could not possess eternal life. He could not enter the kingdom of heaven. Then uh, what kind of person he is? He is a real, really paid person. Yeah. Beggar, you know, uh, Lazarus, he poor and he suffering in this world. But finally, he entered the kingdom of heaven. And in the kingdom of heaven, he lived happily, joyfully, forever and ever. So, uh, Lazarus, he's a really, really successful person. Yeah. So, it's what uh, this, word, uh, this word of God means. Yeah. Even though we have many, many, many things in this world, we have a power, we have a money, we have education, uh, good degree, high position, huh? we, even though we enjoy all those things, if we don't have an eternal life, if we don't go to kingdom heaven, all those things are usually this word of God say, yeah. What good it will be for someone to gain in the whole world, yet for pay their soul. Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? So, of course, we need many things while we are living this world. But, what you should remember through this word of God is that what we really uh, most urgently necessary thing is, urgently uh, really uh, necessary thing is, what? Eternal life. Yeah. Without possessing eternal life, other thing, you know, Usually, yeah. Like uh, this rich man, yeah. He had uh, many things, but finally he went to hell. He tormented, tortured for ever and ever. Okay, that's why, so uh, today was a let's remind again uh, how much wonderful the kingdom of heaven is, how much terrible. So hell is, and uh, first let's uh, see uh, what is the appearance of the kingdom of heaven. Uh, let's see how much wonderful the kingdom of heaven is. Today, word of God, uh, Revelation chapter 21 and also chapter 22, uh, very nicely described of our kingdom of heaven. Uh, our God created the whole world, heaven and earth, but original heaven and earth, or original world, uh, has been polluted with sins. Uh, so polluted and so corrupted with the sin. So Bible say it will surely be destroyed one day, fully, and it will disappear. After that, our God will create the new heaven and new earth, totally. Yeah. Uh, and there, in new heaven and new earth, there will be a new Jerusalem. So, uh, there will be the kingdom of heaven, eternal paradise. Uh, Revelation 21, and 21 verse 1 and verse 5 say like this, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sin. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Uh, so, original world, original heaven and earth, because of so polluted by the sin, uh, by the prophecy, our God will destroy and our God will make new heaven and new earth. And in new heaven, heaven and new earth, there will be a new Jerusalem. So, there will be uh, kingdom of heaven, eternal paradise. Uh, let's just see what is the appearance of New Jerusalem. Uh, New Jerusalem, it will be greatly shining and brilliant place. Yeah. A lot of uh, light, full of light. There is no any darkness. It's a shining, it's a brilliant, it's a sparkling. Yeah. And each shape is like a cube. Yeah. Widest and height are same, cube, and each uh, each length of widest and height is two thousand two hundred kilometer. Yeah. So it's so huge, and the thickness of each wall is sixty-five meters. It has great and high wall with twelve gates, 
on the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Its three gates are on the east, three are on the west, three on the south, and three on the north. Each wall has 12 foundations on it. The names of 12 apostles of Jesus Christ are written. Yeah. Okay, from here, I believe we need to take note. So, yeah. From here, uh, really say, King of Heaven, so wonderful. Yeah. Marvelous. Here say, the world is uh, New Jerusalem. Uh, each world is made out of jasper. The city made out of pure gold, as pure as glass. Each foundation of the city world is decorated with its different kind of precious stone. Jasper, sapphire, uh, agate, emerald, onyx, ruby, crystal light, beryl, topaz, turquoise, uh, jacinth, emerald, uh, amethyst, and yeah. so 12 gates are 12 portals, each gate made out of a single portal. The great tree of the city is of gold, as pure as transparent glass. So, uh, we can know King of Heaven is a place of provable jewels, precious stones, gold, and treasures. Yeah. All city made of made out of those things. All city uh, full of those things. So what can we know? If we go to Kingdom Heaven, everybody rich. Yeah. Uh, even homeless people in Kingdom Heaven, yeah, they will uh, sleep on golden bed. Not the uh, same gold in this world. Uh, there is a uh, yellow. Huh? The gold in heaven is a transparent gold. So precious, so luxurious. There's no gold like this in this world. Because in kingdom heaven, even street is a, tr is a, a transparent gold. So we can know everybody who go to heaven, they are rich, all rich. Yeah. So what we can know? Uh, we don't need to too much uh, stick to things in this world because they are not eternal, they are temporary. Yeah. One day all will disappear. But uh, Kingdom of Heaven is eternal. The richness, this richness in Kingdom of Heaven is, uh, is uh, uh, eternal. But uh, many people spiritually blinded. So they don't. Uh, see these wonderful kingdom of heaven and they see only uh, things that is visible in this world thinking they thinking they think that things uh, that is visible in this world are everything and they pursue and they see only those things they uh, work so hard they so labor to get only those things, morning to evening, continually. They even uh, uh, hate others, even harm others, even kill others, speak lie to get all those things. Uh, that is visible and that is in, in, this, in, in, uh, in this world. But, beloved uh, after girls, they are not eternal things, they are temporal things. And if we uh, possess those things, accumulate, store a lot, when we die, we cannot bring anything to Kingdom of Heaven. Even single of a coin, we cannot bring it to Kingdom of Heaven. And this was of God. Uh, of revelation definitely say to us, if we go to Kingdom of Heaven, even street, all gold, even the uh, stones here and there, these are all precious stones and jewels and treasures. It means if we go there, we are all rich. Yeah. So what we can know? We can know that uh, really, really, yeah. we should seek for peace 
sequel, kingdom of God as your first. That's why Jesus goes on saying, seek first this kingdom and righteousness. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> who is a really wise person according to the word of God? Really the wise person is uh, those who recognize the true value of the kingdom of heaven and they uh, and try to invest their temporary and short life in this world to possess huh, the kingdom of heaven, to possess the reward and price that, is, uh, that are prepared by our Jesus Christ in kingdom of heaven. They are really, really uh, wise people according to the word of God, who are foolish people. The foolish people are those who uh, think things in this world are only everything. And only uh, pursue and seek uh, things in this world. Because of that, they neglect eternal things, kingdom of heaven. So finally, lose kingdom of heaven. They are really, really foolish and stupid people open to the world of God. That's why, while we are living this world, we should remember uh, our life in this world temporarily. Everything we put us now. Huh? Temporary. So we actively use our material blessing, everything we possess, for the thing our Lord Jesus Christ created, so that finally we can prepare uh, to possess kingdom of heaven. We can prepare uh, to possess eternal newer than Christ in kingdom of heaven. I believe that's a really, really uh, wise life, wise people. And also, uh, what I can say uh, about kingdom of heaven, we will say there is no temple because our God and the Jesus Christ are the temple there. And the city doesn't need sun and moon because the glory of God gives it light and the lamp is the lamp. And each gate never be closed because there is no night. Hell is full of darkness, but heaven is full of light. So there, there's no night. So the Jerusalem city, huh? no need to cross uh, doors because there's no night. Wonderful. So beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. The river of the water of life, as clear as a crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb uh, down the middle of the city. On each side of the river, there is a tree of life that bears 12 crops of fruit and yields its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nation. So, King of Heaven, there is no uh, people who are thirsty, who are hunger, hungry, who are sick, because there is a, a livable uh, uh, life that flows through the city. Anyone who are thirsty can go there and get the uh, uh, water of life and serve the thirsty. And anyone who are hungry can take the fruit from the tree of uh, life that uh, uh, that uh, located beside the uh, beside the rivers of life, and also the rivers of the uh, uh, rivers of the uh, tree of life. Uh, it's a uh, it's a, it's a thing that heal all nations. So anyone who has it can uh, be healed through that rivers. In kingdom heaven, there is no sick, sick people, no hungry people, no uh, thirsty people. Yeah. So until here we have seen the uh, external experience of kingdom heaven. Now let's see the characteristic of kingdom heaven, uh, nature of kingdom heaven. Kingdom heaven, our God stay with his people forever. And he will wipe for every tears from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old orders of things has passed away. Anyone who is thirst can get water without cost from the spring of the water of life. No longer will there be any curse. Uh, the thrones of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and His servant will serve Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads. They will reign with our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. It's the place of worshiping and practicing, uh, praising our God without stopping. Yeah. Uh, Revelation chapter 4, 1 through 11, nicely described that. Uh, that's, that's described 
the scenery of Kingdom Heaven. There is a throne of our God and Jesus Christ, and uh, angels, elders surround the throne, and uh, the people who are saved uh, from all nations, all languages, tribes, they surround the throne, and what they are doing? They praise God, they worship God continually for ever and ever, 24 hours a day, 365 a year, eternally without stopping. Uh, that's the place of kingdom of heaven, eternal paradise. Yeah. And in this world, uh, very simple and cursed. So uh, it's what hap uh, it's what is happening in this world all the time. The strong always attack the weak and kill, eat, devour. Uh, the strong always oppress the weak and yeah. harm, especially in. Uh, wild animal, the life of uh, the world of wild animals. Yeah. But in kingdom heaven, the nature of all creatures will be changed. So all are gentle, all are mild, uh, no attacking each other, no kill each other, harm each other. The uh, book of Isaiah chapter 11, uh, 6 through 9, say like this, the wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the cat and the lion and the yearling together and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed, him, feed with the bear. Their young will be down together and the lion will eat straw like uh, the ox. The, the infant, uh, infant will play near the cobra's den and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters of the sea. Yeah. So, really wonderful place. Totally peaceful and loving and caring each other. Uh, uh, so harmonious and <clears throat> uh, so united. Yeah. That's the place of kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Uh, Hebrew chapter 11 verse 13 through 16 say that our spiritual ancestor Abraham, Isaiah, and Jacob, and uh, Joseph, Moses, Apostle Paul, many spiritual ancestors in the Bible, they knew, they realized kingdom heaven uh, and hell. Uh, they realized they are uh, truly eternal uh, world and they knew their life in this world temporary not eternal that's why uh, they treat their life in this world as a life of foreigners and aliens and strangers it means they thought uh, they have a true home country home nation which is kingdom heaven while they are living in this world, they live like uh, foreigners and uh, aliens, uh, the strangers. It means they didn't too much stick to things in this world. They always longing to uh, uh, kingdom heaven. Yeah. They really uh, hope to, uh, ho they really put kingdom heaven as a uh, final hope. Yeah. Here say, instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. So, uh, we also say, uh, like our spiritual ancestor, through words of God, we should realize heaven and hell are real, and our life in this world temporary. So, uh, we should treat our life in this world as uh, like a uh, uh, foreigners and uh, aliens and strangers. We should not too much stick to things in this world. And we should really, really longing for the things that is eternal. Kingdom of heaven, everything in kingdom of heaven. Yeah. We should hope for that, we should longing for that, and we should uh, actively invest our temporal life 
to possess everything in eternal kingdom heaven. Yeah. And likewise, uh, words of God uh, describe about kingdom heaven nicely through many Bible questions. Yeah. Uh, actually, many people who don't believe in Jesus Christ, they don't believe uh, existence of heaven and hell. They have a physical life, but they can, uh, but they, uh, they could not see. They cannot see uh, spiritual world because it's uh, invisible. Uh, they are invisible, but we can see invisible world. Because uh, we are given words of God. Words of God reveal the world that is uh, not visible, eternal world. Uh, anyway, uh, words of God uh, show us invisible world, eternal world, heaven and hell. We have seen until now uh, about the, uh, the, we have seen revelation about eternal kingdom heaven in the Bible. A lot, but because of time limitation, we have uh, let's just say this much. And also, Bible describe about hell uh, so much, and give warning continually to us not to go there. So through words of God, let's just see how hell is being described. First, Bible say hell is a place of eternal fire. Yeah. Bible continues say hell is a place of fire. Eternal fire, uncontrollable fire, terribly hot fires. Yeah. Matthew 5 22 say, But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to brother or sister, Laka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who say you fool will be in danger of the fire of hell. Every, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. This is how it will be. It will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and uh, separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing ponies where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter like maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eyes cause you to stumble, goose it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. Likewise, the uh, Bible says, hell is a place of terribly hot. The fire in hell never be extinguished, never uh, able to be uh, uh, quenched. It's an uncontrollable, uh, uncontrollable fire. It's a place of fire and sulfur. There, uh, those who throw into hell will be tormented and tortured and burnt away, continually, but never die. Uh, continually, just uh, uh, suffering and pain, at the suffering and uh, uh, tormented by terribly hot fire. And also, Bible say. Uh, hell is a place of uh, terribly, uh, terrible darkness and it's a place of uh, weeping and nesting tears eternally. Yeah. Uh, you say Matthew 8, 20, 12, but the subject of the kind kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and nesting of tears. Then the king told the attendant, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth and threw that worldly servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth so where uh, why the people in hell huh, they continually weep and gnashing their teeth because this is a so terribly painful place yeah that's why they gnashing their teeth and they weep because of regret, why I come here? Why I didn't believe in Jesus Christ? Why I li live in the world? I had a chance. People come to me and give one warning. They continually uh, 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 advise me, uh, believe in Jesus Christ, repent sin, 
Why I did, didn't listen to them? Why I didn't repent my sin? Even God already late. Late, no chance. Once through it her, never be able to come out or exchange. Change, never possible. That's why they weep with a terrible uh, regret, a nesting of teeth because of a terrible pain, but late, no more chance. Hell is such a terrible place that going to hell, heaven with losing or some part of our body is better than going to hell with a whole body. Jesus Christ say, if your eye, right eye, causes you to stumble, goes, you out, goes out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Yeah. Uh, if our eye make us commit sin through watching everything. So, finally, if we go to hell, uh, it's better. We put out our eye and not commit sin and go to heaven without one eye. Without one eye. Jesus Christ, it's better. Huh? Then go to hell with a whole body, with two eyes. If our hand make us commit sin continually, so finally, uh, if we go to hell, it's better. Uh, then we uh, we cut off our hand and it's better for us to go to heaven with just one hand uh, than go to hell with two hands. Uh, because hell is such a terrible place. Yeah. Uh, this word of God said to us, we should make a decision. We should make a resolution. Tell me. If something make us come sin, we should make a resolution sternly to cut off those things, to stop, to throw those things. Why? Hell is so hell place. We have that and continue come sin. Finally, if we go to hell, it's just so terrible. That's why Jesus Christ cast the promise through this word of God. We should make a stern resolution and decision. To throw, to stop, to cut off something every that make us come sin, whether it is our whether it is our eye or whether it is our <coughs> uh, hands or whatever, if they make us make us come sin, we should cut off sternly. Yeah. This word of God say. Today we are uh, leave the situation that uh, many everything, uh, many things uh, that tempt us. Surround us. Yeah. If we do to them and commit sin, finally, if we go to hell, it's so terrible. So uh, let's remember this word of God. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Uh, because hell is a so terrible place. And there is a hell is a place of uh, eternal dissection of body and soul. Yeah. Uh, Jesus Christ said, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Yeah. So, uh, Jesus Christ said, We should not fear to our God more than human. Why? Human, even uh, able to harm us, maximum can just uh, take our physical life. But our God, He is able to uh, uh, able to uh, send us to hell and make us be make our soul and uh, body uh, and spirit to be destroyed, to be tormented forever and ever in the hell. Our God has that authority. That's why we should operate our God more. Uh, this word of God say. Uh, some people in some circumstances can be uh, threatened or persecuted or endangered for the reason they believe in Jesus Christ. But let's remember this word of God. We should pray to of our God more than humans. Even those who uh, threaten us because of our faith, uh, uh, 
worst case, they may be able to take our physical life. No? Uh, but because of that danger or threat, if we deny the name of Jesus Christ, what happened? Will be thrown into hell, and there uh, will be uh, destroyed our not only our body but soul and spirit forever and ever. And hell is a place of eternal trouble and distress. And also hell is a place of eternal shame and contempt. And uh, so Daniel 12, 2 to 3 say, multitude who should sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heaven, and those who lead many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. And hell is a place of eternal torment without any rest in. Revelation chapter 14, 9 to 11 say, If anyone worship the beast and its image and receive its mark on their forehead or on their hand, they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which had been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. They will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no more no rest day and night for those who worship the beast and its image, or for anyone who receives the mark of its name. So, uh, Bible say in uh, in uh, last uh, seven years uh, during the Great Tribulation, Antichrist will get the power of the whole world. He will force every human in the world to have a, to receive pieces mark 666. Uh, if we don't receive that mark, they will be uh, persecuted and also their life is very inconvenient. Cannot do any selling and buying. Uh, but if we receive six, six, uh, pieces mark 666, six, it's saying that we sell our soul to uh, Satan. We lose definitely our salvation. That, that's why we should not, we should never receive that uh, business mark six six six, uh, because uh, if we receive business mark six 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 because of a threat and danger and inconvenient life, or uh, we uh, lead to uh, antichrist uh, forcing that we worship him, uh, antichrist what happened? Here say we'll be thrown into hell and. Uh, will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb, and the uh, smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest day and night for those who worship the beast and its image, or for anyone who receives the mark of its name. And also, Bible say, uh, the hell is a place where worms and uh, uh, maggots never die. And they will, they will eat people in the hell. Uh, Mark chapter nine, uh, forty-three to forty-nine describe hell as a place like this. Hell where the worms that eat them do not do not die, and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with the fire. Yeah. Isaiah sixty-six twenty-two to twenty-four also describe. Uh, uh, describe the hell and they will go out and look on the dead body of those who uh, leveled against me the worm that eat them will not die the fire that burns them will not be quenched and they will lose some to all mankind yeah. Isaiah 14 9 through 11 uh, this part question uh, say about Babylon king yeah, the king of Babylon empire uh, while he's alive, he is so powerful and he conquered many nations, killed many people in other nations, killed kings of many nations. Likewise, uh, he boasted his power. He is so uh, uh, powerful, great. But when he died, he was, where he went? He went to hell. And when he, he went to hell, there, there were kings of many nations whom this Babylon king killed. They, uh, they really so happy when Babylon king came here and they very, very terribly jeered and mocked 
and left her, this Babylon king. And when this Babylon king came to her, what happened? This word of God say like this, maggots are spread out beneath him, beneath you, and worms cover you. This Babylon king, when he threw into her, his body full of maggots and worms covering him. And his body was uh, eaten up by these uh, uh, worms. And these uh, worms never die, even in the uh, eternal fire, in the hell. They continually arrive and uh, uh, afflicted people there, eat their body. So, so terrible. Yeah. Okay. Until here, we have seen. Uh, until here, we have seen uh, what kingdom heaven look like. What is the nature of a kingdom heaven? Characteristics of a kingdom, heaven. and we have seen what uh, the hell look like and uh, the nature of hell. So, really important thing is we should. Uh, really important thing is. Uh, we once again should remind who can enter the kingdom of heaven, uh, how we can kingdom enter the kingdom of heaven, and how we can uh, avoid from being thrown into hell. Yeah, it's a so crucial thing, very very important thing. Really, heaven is our final goal and target for Christians. So uh, let's see through word of God. Word of God say. To enter kingdom heaven, what we should do? We should solve our sin problem. Why we should go to hell? Because of our sin. Uh, we are in sin place. Uh, we are not able to be thrown into hell and we should be punished there. We should pay for our sin. So we should solve our sin problem. How? We can solve our sin problem only through Jesus Christ. Only through believing Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ say through John 14.6 I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Yeah. John 3, 16 to 18 say, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believed in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but Whoever does not believe stand condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Yeah. So, likewise, uh, we should believe in Jesus Christ. Only through believing in Jesus Christ we can solve uh, our sin problem. Uh, but after we believe in Jesus Christ, we should believe in Jesus Christ truly, genuinely. Yeah. Bible surely say our faith should be genuine. Our faith should be uh, true. Uh, true faith. So, uh, once we believe in Jesus Christ, we should believe in Jesus truly, genuinely. So, whatever situation, even we are persecuted, even we are endangered and uh, threatened by others, because of our faith, we should never abandon our faith in Jesus Christ. Huh? Even we become to be killed, lose our life, or uh, tortured, we should never give our faith in Jesus Christ. Likewise, we should have a true faith, genuine faith. Revelation 21, 7, 7, uh, to the word of God say, Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I'll be their God, and they'll be my children. So, who are those who, uh, who are victorious? Yeah. Those who are victorious are those who keep their faith to the end. Uh, in no matter what situation, yeah. uh, the book of Revelation say about uh, the, the, uh, say about persecution and threat uh, by enemy and by uh, antichrist and uh, the power of Satan. But important thing is we should not give up our faith to the end. So those who keep their faith to the end is part of uh, persecution and. Uh, threat and or uh, very hard situation, they are those who are victorious. Yeah. So when we keep our faith to the end, uh, finally we can inherit kingdom heaven. Yeah. 
Then second, uh, global liberation chapter two, verse fourteen say, "Bless uh, those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may, may go through the gate into the sea." Yeah. So, this word can say, uh, "Bless are those who wash their robes." So, what does it mean, uh, washing their robes? Washing their robes is uh, like a symbolic expression. Yeah. Uh, it means that we should do repent our sin continually. After we believe in Jesus Christ, it's not that we became like a totally Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, one, uh, the one, uh, one time, uh, gradually, uh, we, uh, we uh, become to be processed into sanctification. We gradually imitate our Lord Jesus Christ more and more. That's why have, uh, after believing Jesus, we make a mistake. We uh, we become to do wrong thing. Even even though we don't want, we become to make a mistake. We become to do the things that we don't want. Uh, whenever we do such a wrong thing, what we should do? What do we say? We should repent. We should repent. Repent is the way that we can uh, wash our mistake, and we can be renewed. We can restore. Relationship with our, our God again, yeah. And uh, repentance, uh, Greek words, uh, metanonia, metanonia, metanonia. So what does it mean, metanonia? Metanonia means uh, change direction totally. Yeah. If we go to simple way, if we repent, we should change direction totally. It means we should stop the sin. That's the meaning of metanonia, yeah. Uh, and here, wash, yeah. uh, uh, in Greek words, it's a present continuous tense. It means we should not repent just one time. We should repent continually. Yeah. Uh, until Jesus comes again, whenever we come sin, we truly repent. Yeah. And we try, truly try to change our life into a uh, holy and righteous life. Yeah. They are blessed. Yeah. They, are, uh, uh, they are welcome into kingdom heaven. Today, what does God say? Yeah. And Jesus also said to Luke 13, 1 to 3, Now there, are, there was some present at the time who told Jesus about the Galilean whose blood plate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will be, uh, you too will all perish. Jesus has said, unless you repent, you too will all perish. Yeah. That's why we should repent. Yeah. We are still in flesh. Uh, we are in the process of sanctification. That's why we make a mistake. We don't want, we live on a holy life, but we, are, uh, we know we make a mistake. What, what shall we do? We should repent. We should rely on Holy Spirit. And we try to uh, change it and transform our life by the power of the Holy Spirit continually. And uh, we always say, after we believe in Jesus Christ, we should believe in Jesus Christ truly and genuinely. Yeah. I would say our faith should be true and genuine. And uh, uh, these true faith, uh, genuine faith, uh, must be live open to words of God. Obey to words of God. Yeah. So Revelation 22, 7 say, Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy written in this scroll. Yeah. Uh, John, uh, John uh, the apostle, he said, uh, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ said, Look, I am coming soon. Uh, Blessed is the one who keeps the word of the prophecy written in this scroll. And uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 66 also describes new heaven, new earth, and also say who are, who are the people, uh, who are the people, uh, who are the people who are able to enter kingdom heaven, uh, new heaven, new earth. Uh, they are like this. These are the ones who I look on with favor, those who are humble and contrite in spirit, and who tremble at my words. Those who tremble at my words. It means those who 
try to obey to order of the will. To them, our God promise, uh, our God will look on uh, them with favor. Yeah. And uh, Matthew 7 21, Jesus Christ said, Not everyone who say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. Yeah. And Jesus also say one parable, a parable of a wise builder and foolish builder. The wise builder, he uh, built his house on the rock. Uh, so when uh, later a uh, storm come and rain uh, come and window strongly uh, blow and uh, hit the house, but the house stand firm, never collapse. But foolish builder, what he did? He built his house on the sand. So when storm came, rain come, and the window strongly attack the house, what happened? The house easily collapsed. Yeah. They are white, uh, they are foolish builders. So uh, building the house on the sand, what does it mean? Uh, Jesus Christ explained the meaning of that uh, clearly. Uh, those who build their house on the rock is uh, is those who listen to the words of God and practice the words of God, obey the words of God. And those who uh, build their house on uh, sand are those who listen to the words of God but not practice the words of God into their action, yeah, into their life. So they are uh, like uh, foolish builders. So, uh, here we should know what does it mean wind blowing storm come rain uh, coming what does it mean uh, they, uh, they, they it means they means final judgment yeah, final judgment yeah. so how can how we can stand firm in the time of final judgment this word of God Jesus Christ said we should have a true face genuine face we should believe just the truly through trying to obey to was of God. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, this is the way was of God say we uh, uh, this is the way that we able to enter kingdom heaven. Uh, and let's see who are thrown into hell. Yeah. Uh, they are those who reject believing Jesus Christ. Those who don't defend their sin and continually in simple life. And those who disobey the words of God continually without repentance. Yeah. Uh, today, words of God say, but who worldly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexual immoral, those who practice magic art, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Yeah. So, uh, those people here, will be thrown into hell. Quarterly, poor quarterly, uh, they are those who uh, are afraid of some persecution and danger or threat. They try to give up faith in Jesus Christ, that way. Uh, maybe they may spare their life, but finally, they will lose eternal life. They are quarterly and unbelieving, reject believing in Jesus Christ. The why doing, those who are doing everything continually, the murderer. Well, murderer, according to Jesus' strategy, is not only those who take other people's uh, physical life, uh, anyone who uh, bears uh, hatred, hostility, uh, the antagonistic mind against somebody, uh, those who don't forgive others yet, they are murderer. Yeah, they are murderer. Yeah. Those who hate brother, they are murderer. Yeah, Jesus Christ teach and sexually immoral. Yeah. Uh, uh, according to Jesus Christ teaching, uh, those who commit adultery is not only those who, uh, those who have physical relationship with other gender besides medicine. Uh, even we see other gender with our eye and bear uh, rude mind, we will commit adultery. Jesus Christ teach. Yeah. And those who practice magic art, uh, they are those who united with every spirit. Idolaters, idolatry. Bible say, uh, not only just we bow down before false god or image of uh, 
Pus Gardas, I don't know if he is a, a greedy, yeah, greedy, yeah, state of mind, greedy. Uh, we love something in this world. Morten Alga, it's idolatry, yeah, all liars. Why we are living, how much, many times, how many, how many times we make a mistake, our words, our speaking, our lips. Sometimes we do call it the uh, white line. Yeah. It means uh, 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 we try to do, we try to speak lie to escape some our uh, some hard situation. Anyway, uh, even we speak lie for some good intention. Anyway, we we make a mistake in our words and to escape some hard situation, we also speak lie. Anyway, no matter whether we know or not, yeah, we make a, we make a many mistakes. Our words, we make we speak many lies. But here say all liars, they will be consigned to the fire lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. That's why uh, we should be cautious our speaking, and we should continue repent our words, mistake of our words. Nothing impure will ever enter it. No, where anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those who, whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah. Outside are the dog, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. They will be thrown into eternal fire. Yeah. Okay, now let's make a conclusion. Yeah, conclusion is that heaven and hell are real. All humans will go to be one of two places, heaven or hell, surely after our death. Heaven is a place of eternal happiness, joy, glory, and peace, and the place where we can praise and worship our God eternally. Hell is a place of eternal fire, torment, and suffering, hardship, punishment, and pain forever. We can enter the kingdom of heaven only through believing in Jesus Christ, truly. We should keep our faith in Jesus Christ to the end, in no matter what situation, um, in no matter what situation, to enter kingdom heaven. We should repent our sin continually and by uh, try living holy and righteous life through obeying to the words of God to enter kingdom heaven. Yeah. So today uh, we uh, we share. Uh, of God, I mean, we, we share words of God about kingdom heaven and hell uh, as only Jesus Christ say even we possess many things in this world if we lose eternal life we become to lose everything you know, kingdom heaven uh, and the kingdom heaven most important thing yeah, only through Jesus Christ uh, by faith in Jesus Christ and by grace of God uh, we can enter only by grace of God, only faith in Jesus Christ, we can enter kingdom heaven. So uh, we wish and pray all believers, all people who uh, listen to these words of God uh, may believe in Jesus Christ truly and genuinely and may enter kingdom heaven really successfully. Yes. Okay, let's pray together.